it a moment for those men in Houston to see if their supposition, the profile they have drawn of what they think Skylab looks like from their telemetry data and from a long-range uh, secret Air Force camera actually uh, matches what they're going to see now close up from uh, the uh, command module television. If we get that picture, uh, let's hope it comes up shortly. from the spacecraft, mostly the voice of uh, Captain Pete Conrad. The workshop is fire intact. Stand by one, I'll check. Hang on. As a matter of fact, you don't have to tell me. I, I thought it was flying through clouds up here. And every time it fires, it tax puff. I can see it, and it's just a big burst of, of uh, gas out of it. Let's talk about the attitude control system, of course. Skylab. Yeah. Skylab. Uh, Pete, you're right. We are firing. And Skylab Houston, we want quads Bravo and Delta to the PSM when you can. The blackness of space is always a surprise. It has really nothing exactly mm -hmm. that. I think you can see it uh, as we've accustomed ourselves to seeing Skylab. It looks like it's upside down to me. That you can see the windmill effect at the bottom Roger. of the picture. It may be that the picture comes back that way, too. Yeah. Fire another one. Man, does this shoot a big cloud out when it does that? Okay, we're firing again. Yeah, we're firing This isn't going to be a very long picture uh, this time. Uh, they, the Guam station uh, isn't one of the primary stations on television for television uh, reception. Skylab Houston, did you copy my request to Bravo and Delta quads to the PSM? Everything's on PSM, Houston. And it can track, the, uh, track the Skylab for only a, a short time, about 10 minutes. I read you loud and clear, Pete. Hear me. Oh, okay, I'm on Fox. You'll hear it all. Okay, good. Better pictures are expected to come a little uh, later on uh, this afternoon when uh, the... And CDR Houston, we're going to be starting... breaking right now. Roger. And the two craft are over Texas, and then we'll be 17 minutes, and a, and a pretty good picture should be at that time. That, uh, that comes at about... Oh, uh, that'll come in another 20 minutes or so. Partially deployed solar panel. That's CS1, right? Roger, that's what we think. Uh, in uh, CDR Houston, uh, in about one minute, we'll be starting the Swiss maneuver, and I'll let you know when we issue the command. Okay. Picture is a little disappointing. 18 feet right now. He can't fly to looking. Down to 10 feet a second. I got that confirmation from Pete Conrad that uh, indeed one of the solar panels is there and partially deployed. Looks like they're looking back into the spacecraft. Got a reflection that. off their Reflecting spacecraft off their glass, window. Huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, he's changing uh, you... lenses, it appears. It's now smaller. You guys get TV, Houston? Roger, Paul. We do have uh, TB, TV, and uh, it's uh, kind of hard to see right now, but it's getting better as you get closer. And Skylab Houston, uh, we've issued a maneuver to the Swiss. It, you ought to see it move a little bit. Okay, I saw it tax fire. It's a very high contrast target. It's hard to get that sucker right in TV so you can see anything. 
Rogers is Rogers so bright to get the light adjustment, and this is what he was complaining about, mm -hmm. is very difficult because you have, as you mentioned earlier, the blackness of space and yet the brightness of this object and, uh, in the sunlight. PLT, here's Money the opening on it. Seeing that he could almost use a filter on that, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. On the pot. And PLT Houston, if you have a chance to answer, we'd like to know what the light setting is on the television. Maybe it'll help us uh, tune ours up. Better switch it back and forth between peak and average to try to get it, Dick. Roger, Paul, copy. I'm getting the best picture on peak, which is what you got right now. And look, it is just not convenient for me to get my head around to read the numbers to you. No, that's okay. That's Paul Weitz, who's operating the uh, camera. He and... I gotta get break, man. I don't like what's going on. <laughs> this, this is a typical concern when you're affecting the final phase of a rendezvous. The velocity, the closing velocity is quite critical. And you, you, you do this so many times that you have uh, sort of an inbred intuition about how well the rendezvous is going. That's what Pete was referring to. Pete Conrad, who and PLT Houston, uh, just the leave it at peak yeah, uh, lighting, yes, and uh, mm -hmm. it's looking better and better to us. What you try to do is now we're getting some detail motion. on this. This is looking very good now. Yeah. Even the, the light, the uh, yellow of the, the gold of the mylar surface is showing. What you try to do is avoid motion, relative motion, other than closing, of course, and it's drifting across the cockpit slightly. Mm -hmm. That's what he meant by he didn't like what was going on. It's just to, he wants to smooth off the final phase of the rendezvous. Well, you sure don't see those solar panels deployed other than the classic windmill. The picture for good, or it's uh, area is solid gold. Roger, copy. Looks rather smooth. Hmm. Fast wing number one, you can see it. It uh, looks like it's a good 15 degrees. Uh, around the top on this side. Okay, uh, let, let's go around. I gotta get some photos. Now, huh? 
see that arm is supposed to have extended all the way out to a 90 degree angle from the spacecraft and uh, then to have dropped down like a, a Venetian blind a whole series of solar panels which would have created on one arm 6,000 watts of power. One thing is TV sets too big for in here. Roger, we're looking at it. I assume you're pointing just about in the place where the meteoroid shield is underneath the wing. Is that correct? Well, I'm trying to, but my picture is turned inside out and backwards, and that camera hangs up in here in a couch structure. Roger. Okay, it looks okay, well, like the easy. meteoroid shield <laughs> at the upper fifth panel on the sand wing has wrapped around it just slightly. My guess is that our easiest thing to do is just go to the end and try and deploy it. Point it. The damn spacecraft keeps drifting. I have a hard time getting the thing to circulate it. Well, uh, hang in there, Paul. Uh, it isn't real steady, but every now and then we're getting uh, some pretty clear views and uh, we can replay it. Outside the window there. And and Pete, one question that I would like to ask you, and, and that is, you said you could see the butterfly hinge a while ago. Uh, could you tell us the condition of it? Well, the butterfly hinge is underneath the pathway all the way on the far side of it, and it's up. Roger. It's, I mean, uh, I'm not even noticing the feet. It's inside the cockpit now. He was within five feet of oh. that uh, antenna that dragged out and uh, around it from the other side. From Actually, the spacecraft, about mm -hmm. 25, 30 feet. Yeah, but the, the, and the one thing, the one thing that's bothering me though is that that if this was the wing that was down and locked, and then they opened it, then it pulled that meteorite shield as far as it did. It pulled it 18. That's a hell of a good point. And that's where it, 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 it's hanging up the solar panel right at the upper vent plate. Does that make sense to you, to The upper of the three vent plates, which is just below where the meteorite shield starts, the top part of it starts. That part is wrapped onto the sand beam by about three or four inches. Roger, Pete, and uh, I think you gave us a real good picture of uh, that piece of metal just a second ago. Oh, it is, Houston? Hey, affirmative, sure are. Still got uh, about nine or minutes I left in this pass. What time is it? Tell me, tell me when daylight is, at night, 8.24. CDR, Houston, you still got 21 minutes of uh, daylight, and it's at 8.26. Now, where would you like to go, anybody? <laughs> I gotta get away. I gotta get away from this. Shall I get down? It's great to have Pete back up there again. <laughs> no, I think we will. Oh, we are. We, well, he's a good talker too, uh, uh, which is a, a good test pilot. He's giving them everything they need to know. I gotta get out of the way. It's just gone. But he's gonna get down and drop below us. Find that spacecraft, yeah, and of course he don't work very good or his high contrast. Their speed and, out and attitudes aren't exactly matched. Why uh, you, you've got to fly it because they can exactly drift yeah. into each other. You get TV at your window. And all of this data can be I'm played back over, over and over and over again for analysis, which is important. And if you didn't say anything, there wouldn't be any data. Right. That's quite right. It's very hard to train oh, someone to. to talk. <laughs> that's exactly what they're going to be doing is playing back these pictures over and over again stopping the action studying it and uh, then in conference with uh, Conrad White CDR Kerwin. Houston uh, we've seen enough television to uh, let us uh, think a lot about this you're uh, cleared to turn off the TV and uh, complete any photography you haven't gotten and you're cleared for soft dock in saving uh, power in that uh, command module as well, mm -hmm. since they're going to be using that later on, perhaps, to augment the power in the Skylab. Uh, Getting ready for 
And this transmission is expensive power lines. Right, Paul, go ahead. I can't understand you, but there's that little piece. It looks like a row of bolts that's wrapped up over the edge of the beef ferry. Roger, we see that, Paul, and uh, if you did not copy my last, uh, we think we have seen enough TV here. You're clear to turn off the TV, can, uh, complete your photography if necessary, Thanks, and you're clear for soft dock. That seems well, like Houston has seen enough, they have enough data to CDR start drawing conclusions. Where's yeah. any other tunnel, too? Well, that, uh, another tunnel. It, it's remarkable, it seems to me. CDR Houston, do you read? Still, that this vehicle is... ...for the front end of the vehicle. Skylab somewhat... Houston, how do you read? Perhaps a uh, possibly discouraging report there a minute ago about problems with that butterfly hinge. Earlier, uh, they had eyeballed it, and uh, we understood the report to be that it looked like it was in good yeah, shape. Intact. Yes. Now, with a closer look, they're saying it looks like uh, it's damaged, and that would make a lot of difference in getting that solar panel deployed, I should think. The reason, uh, by the way, that Conrad's concerned about using this fuel is that the command module wasn't built for all this maneuvering. It doesn't have that much fuel, and the fuel was provided for what we call last-ditch maneuvering in case the limb had trouble. Mm -hmm. So he has to conserve this for the next exercise, or possibly even the uh, deployment of the, of the spinnaker, as I call it, over the damaged area. So he has has this fuel as a concern. He should be worried about it. Yep. Their first uh, their first mission is uh, they're going to have to use more fuel because in about uh, in a couple hours from now, after they soft dock, that is, dock with the spacecraft but not really button themselves together, uh, they're going to have dinner. And then uh, a little later on this evening, uh, if they decide to go ahead and try to pull that uh, solar panel open, uh, they will undock at uh, 7.32 Eastern Time. That's at 2 hours and 15 minutes from now. And uh, uh, then they will try to fly alongside using a lot of that fuel because they have to maneuver very carefully, get within uh, range of that long shepherd's crook uh, so that Paul White's donning his space suit, of course, all of them donning their space suits against the uh, uh, the opening the hatch, uh, Whites will lean up and uh, try with that shepherd's crook to pull open uh, that uh, solar panel. Now, that will be decided upon as Houston studies these pictures they've just uh, taped in Houston and the uh, verbal data that they're getting from uh, the astronauts. They'll make the decision as a go-no-go no go of what they called uh, Seaver stand-up uh, extravehicular activity for Whites to try that. Uh, then uh, that that will not be the out of range of television stations at, on the ground at that time. We will not see pictures of the event and the.